and the depth of their hatred is equaled by the madness of the destruction they design. We have found diagrams of American nuclear power plants. We have realized one thing. Terrorists go to targets that where they have the easiest chance of, of causing a great harm. We need to be smart, we need to remove targets, we need to be protecting targets, and we are not doing that in the case of Indian Point. Right now, nuclear power plants have no defenses against a jet attack from the air like the one we saw on September 11th. And we all know that one of these jets passed directly overhead on the morning of September 11th. It could have taken out the site if it wanted to. Indian Point is unique. Unlike any other nuclear facility, two reactors operate here in the most densely populated area of the United States. The reactors are 43 miles from ground zero, and we now know the terrorists originally targeted nuclear power plants. More than 300,000 people live in the 10-mile radiological emergency evacuation zone. 17 and one half miles marks the peak fatality zone. 20 million residents are within a 50-mile radius called the peak injury zone. 8% of all Americans live within 50 miles of Indian Point. Today, no one could get approval for a nuclear plant in that location. In fact, over 20 years ago, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission Director of State Programs, Robert Ryan, said, I think it is insane to have a three-unit reactor on the Hudson River in Westchester County 40 miles from Times Square, 20 miles from the Bronx. He also said it may be necessary at some future time to consider closing Indian Point. The Indian Point 1 was commissioned in 1962, Indian Point 2 was in, I believe, 1974, and Indian Point 3 was in 1976. They're given a 40-year life unless they're going for a renewal. It is now time for us to say we want these plants closed. We no longer want them in the midst of 20 million people with this potential hazard. One of the things that concerns us about Indian Point is that the plant is among the oldest in the country. Not the oldest, but it's among the oldest in the country. It's getting older. It's had a history of performance problems. There's no guarantee that all of those past sins have been factored out by the new owner, despite the best efforts. At the same time, we're having a regulator that's doing less and less because Congress has told the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to focus on new business, license extensions, new plant designs. It's not been given more staff to do that new work, so it's taking people away from safety oversight at Indian Point, as evidenced by the fact that the plant now has two permanent inspectors, whereas five years ago it had three. I, mean, I think the NRC has clearly lost its way. They definitely don't see their primary job as being to protect the public. Every initial reaction they have to any suggestion is, well, the utilities like this. And if they don't like it, that means that something the NRC is going to be uncomfortable doing. Well, that's a totally inappropriate first reaction for a regulator to have. And yet uh, the responsible officials in the NRC, the nuclear industry, and uh, the overseers in Congress remain in denial about uh, the truth of the situation. A recent report from the Project on Government Oversight indicates that throughout the nuclear industry, security guards are pushed to their breaking point. They're on such heavy overtime in many places. They're working six days a week, 12-hour shifts, 72 hours a week, and they're exhausted. In two cases, guards said, I'm just too tired to do this anymore, and they were fired. Another case, a guard left work and fell asleep driving home because they were so tired. So if they're that tired, they're not really going to be alert if they're in the middle of an assault by uh, heavily armed uh, terrorists. Indian Point 2 has an alarming history of malfunctions and safety problems. It was the first nuclear plant to receive the NRC's red rating, identifying it as one of the country's least safe nuclear facilities. It received that rating because in February 2000, a steam generator tube ruptured spilling 20,000 gallons of radioactive water into the containment building. The public was kept in the dark about the full scope of the accident. Confidence in the NRC was undermined when it was later revealed that 200 gallons of radioactive water spilled into the Hudson River. Commenting on the regulators that oversee nuclear power plants, 
Former NRC Commissioner Peter Bradford said, Regulating in this way is like driving drunk. We'll be fortunate if the only harm is another blow to public confidence. Twenty years ago, Sandy Laboratory issued a report on the consequences of a catastrophic release of radiation at Indian Point. A subcommittee of Congress held closed-door hearings on the report, taking testimony from the NRC. Findings reveal that a meltdown and breach of containment at Indian Point 2 would cause as much as $274 billion in property damage. In year $2,000, this figure rises to $500 billion. The report estimates a meltdown at Unit 2 alone would cause 46,000 peak early fatalities, 141,000 peak early injuries, and 13,000 peak deaths from cancer. The data assumes a successful evacuation and does not include the enormous rise in area population over the past 20 years. Right here in the town of Ramapo in 1960, the population in the town was about 30,000 people. And, and, and that was in the late 60s when these plants were first being developed. Now in the town of Ramapo, we have 110,000 people just here in this town. In 2001, the NRC published a report on spent fuel pool accidents. It stated that half the existing commercial jetliners can penetrate five foot thick reinforced concrete 45% of the time. At Indian Point, 1,500 tons of highly radioactive materials sit in fuel pools with concrete walls. These fuel pools are inside simple metal buildings, not reinforced containment structures. A serious pool fire at Indian Point would be a regional and national disaster of historic proportions. In the event of a meltdown and a major radiological release, the local ecology, including much of the New York City water supply, would be contaminated. A nuclear power plant um, in the modern world needs to be th thought of not as a strictly civilian facility, but as a potential pre-emplaced radiologic weapon. A 1997 Brookhaven lab report claims that a disaster from a spent fuel pool could cause up to 143,000 cancer deaths. Independently, Dr. Gordon Thompson estimates that a major radiation release from Indian Point could render 95,000 square kilometers of land uninhabitable. One of the things people don't realize, if you, when you evacuate in an accident like that, you're not coming back. It's permanent, you're gone, because you will not be allowed, you won't be able to come back in because the land is, is, uh, is radioactive and you don't want to get those doses. <laughs> but let's say, you know, but let's say that uh, we were armed terrorists this morning. I mean, what would you have been able to do to stop us? I mean, you are yeah, unarmed. Let the radio back and then uh, let them know. And then uh, what they'll do is they'll call state police, they'll call county, and then they'll be up here. And that's all we can do. It's, it's not up to us. Like we said, it's up to the higher-ups if they, if they want to act. If the terrorists provide six months' notice, of when they're going to arrive and they follow the rules like they attack only at night when there's not a, a lot of other workers around and they, they wear red hard hats to distinguish them from other workers. They're only going to be about 50 percent successful in causing a, a meltdown at the plant. The reason that terrorists would attack a nuclear power plant is that there's a tremendous amount of radioactivity in the reactor core and in the spent fuel. If that radioactivity is released, you can kill tens of thousands of people and contaminate a large area for centuries. In the early morning hours of April 26, 1986, there was a major explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear reactor in northern Ukraine and released the equivalent of 185 million curies of radiation. Um, that radiation plume reached as far north as Norway, as far east as the Aleutian Islands in Alaska, and as far west as Ireland. Um, so that when we're talking about the radius around the Indian Point reactor, we really have to look at very vast distances. Most of the problems that we've encountered are um, children and adults with severe thyroid problems. There's been an explosion in thyroid cancer with uh, rates among children rising to levels 80 times higher than normal. Birth defects have doubled in the wake of Chernobyl, and there was a recent Israeli-Ukrainian study uh, that was conducted in uh, the year 2001 that found a seven-fold increase in chromosome damage in the children of the Chernobyl liquidators. 
Um, American reactors are traditionally built with uh, many more safety features, an emergency core cooling system, um, uh, a containment uh, uh, reactor pressure vessel. So there are a lot of additional safety features that we have at Indian Point that we wouldn't have at, at a Soviet-built reactor. The problem is in those situations where the various safety systems could be disabled by a terrorist attack. The plant owners claim that the danger to the public remains the same, even if Indian Point were to close. If a nuclear reactor is shut down, the um, risk to the public, if a severe accident occurs, will be greatly reduced. I've calculated that because of the reduction in short-lived fission products that occurs after you shut the reactor down, that if you do have a meltdown and a large uh, radiological release, the number of acute fatalities from radiation poisoning will decrease by 80% and the number of long-term uh, cancer deaths as a result of uh, smaller exposures will be redu reduced by uh, 50 percent. And when you're talking about a reactor like Indian Point in an area with such a high population density, those reductions translate into pretty big numbers, uh, sparing hundreds or even thousands of individuals from uh, a painful death from radiation sickness, and sparing tens or hundreds, uh, hundreds of thousands of people from uh, uh, a death from cancer as a result of the exposures. If there were a problem at Indian Point, everybody would try to leave. The roads wouldn't be able to contain the amount of people that would want to leave. People aren't going to say, well, I'm within uh, 10 and a half miles or I'm within 15 miles. If you're within 30 miles, you're going to leave. If you're in Orange County, you're going to head, head north or head west. Uh, everybody is going to be in, in a total panic. It, it's ludicrous for us to think that there'd be some type of orderly um, uh, withdrawal of people or that people would only leave from this quote peak area. The people would be fleeing the area uh, as soon as the information hit the airwaves. That is why there is no plan of evacuating 20 million people. The people that are on Long Island, how are they going to leave? They're going to have to come through New York City to get to come through either New Jersey or through Rockland County. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. If one person is left behind, that person can, would probably consider the evacuation uh, very unsuccessful. But uh, other people have said if, you get, if you're able to get 75 or 80 percent of the people out in a timely fashion, that's successful. And I think it, realistically, some people are going to uh, bolt as, uh, as soon as they hear something is happening over there and they're not going to stop until they're 100 miles away from here. Others are going to say they don't believe it, they're going to refuse to go, they're going to lock themselves in the basement and refuse to be evacuated. Well, we've really taken the lead role in the evacuation plan. Um, we've sat with the county and tried to refine it uh, to make it a more workable plan. Um, has it been successful? No, it hasn't. They're talking about a window of opportunity for parents to pick up their children prior to going to a reception center. But even that, if you give us 20 minutes, my children would be in three different schools. I would have difficulty retrieving them even in 20 minutes. A 2002 Marist College poll indicates that in the event of a radiation release, a majority of residents within 50 miles of the plant would try to leave. Ironically, only 3% of residents in the 10-mile emergency zone can name even one evacuation center. Hospitals in our community, and hospitals really across the country, are categorically not prepared to deal with mass casualties of uh, victims exposed to radiation. Many hospitals can handle a casualty or a few casualties or even what they call multiple casualties, you know, a handful, a dozen. Uh, but once we started getting mass numbers of people uh, affected by radiation who needed to be decontaminated, we will be in a major and immediate uh, problem in terms of the capacity, the skills, the equipment, and everything else to uh, handle these kinds of exposures. If you give potassium iodide, especially the children and the pregnant women, uh, either right before or immediately after exposure to I-131, it will very effectively prevent thyroid cancer. If it's given much after a few hours following exposure, then it probably won't have much effect. Uh, but even if you give potassium iodide at the right time, it, it only deals with that one very specific type of consequence from a nuclear power disaster. There are many other consequences of radiation, acute and long-term, that the potassium iodide would have no effect on. In the wake of 9-11, uh, when I consider that 
the first reports of radiation from Chernobyl were reported from s northern Sweden, which is about the distance from um, Indian Point to northern Canada, it causes me great concern. Um, we're definitely not immune from a major radiation release, even hundreds of miles downwind from Indian Point. The hazard is so high that no private insurance company could underwrite that hazard without charging such an exorbitant premium that the plant owners couldn't pay it. So Price-Anderson limits the liability for any single plant owner to only $200 million total. Entergy, the owners of Indian Point, make dire predictions for the local economy if the plants are shut down. The East Haddam plant, when it closed, was closed by Northeast Utility and it's now in the decommissioning process. What we found after talking with this first selectman, the mayor of East Haddam, is that the economic impacts um, have not been uh, significant and, and actually the residents um, have had very modest impact in terms of their rate paying, in terms of the taxes paid, in terms of the economic activity. If you take down an end point in terms of prices, uh, the impact will be dependent on what else you do. If you do energy efficiency to make up the loss of an end point, there should be no price impact at all. If you don't do anything in terms of energy efficiency, there will be some increase. The increase might be, you know, a dollar or two a month, uh, you know, but it's minuscule uh, compared to the risk of having Indian Point around. Uh, but it will take some policy actions to get the new power plants online. Uh, there are still some being built. Obviously, Athens is being built. Con Ed has a small plant in the city that's being expanded. Keyspan is expanding one. The New York Power Authority is adding 500 megawatts. So we will have an extra approximately 1,000 megawatts in the city and 1,000 megawatts on the Hudson in the Hudson Valley being added. We should be making major investments in long-term safe energy solutions. Wind power is the fastest growing source of new electricity. New York has large in-state resources of wind power, which could be the cheapest long-range solution for clean electrical generation. And one of the great things about solar energy is that it provides electricity at peak times. You know, the, the problem with electricity at power plants is about how do we meet the needs on a hottest summer peak day. You know, we don't have to worry about electricity at winter time, at night obviously. How do we meet that need? Solar energy is there when it's the hottest when we were running our air conditioners. If we could capture just a fraction of that on our rooftops and in our building facade, that would be a huge contribution. And it's actually not as expensive as people think. All in all, we really need to get together with all of our partners, federal, state, county, our local officials, our environmental groups, just everybody sitting, talking, and, and figuring on um, how it is that we can make this a safer Hudson River Valley, how it is that we can decommission, how it is that we can create the jobs that we need to create and do what's responsible for the Buchanan-Montrose communities. The effort to close down Indian Point continues to generate momentum throughout the New York metropolitan area and the Hudson Valley. Scores of resolutions calling for an Indian Point shutdown have been approved by village and town boards and school and community boards. Putnam, Rockland, and Westchester County legislators have overwhelmingly voted to close Indian Point. As we look to our future, we must ask, how much is Indian Point worth? We can replace the power, but we cannot replace the lives. Thank you.